सरीकल्चर एज एमज एस ए मीनिंगफुल एंड वेबल आग्रो बेस्ड कॉटेज इंडस्ट्री इट इज़ बींग प्रैक्टिसिंग इन मोर दैन थर्टी कंट्रीज अक्रॉस ट्रॉफिकल एंड टेम्परेट रीजन्स प्रोड्यूस सिल्क देयर कंबाइंड प्रोडक्शन एड्स अप टू अबाउट एटी फाइव थाउजेंड मेट्रिक टन्स ऑफ रॉ सिल्क इन एयर प्रजेंटली चाइना इंडिया जपान साउथ कोरिया एंड ब्राजील आर द लीडिंग सिल्क प्रोड्यूसिंग कंट्रीज जपान विच वॉज वन से लीडिंग सिल्क प्रोड्यूसर एंटिल नाइनटीन सेवेंटी एट producing a less than that of india and occupies only the third place in world raw silk production and slowly shifted to other commercial enterprises china is temperate country ranked first in the world raw silk production and accounts for 57432 metric tons among tropical countries india is ranked second in the world in mulberry raw silk production of the major producer of silk accounting for 15,305 metric tons of raw silk from 1,79,065 hectares of mulberry garden annually. Increasingly practiced under a variety of agroclimatic and socio-economic conditions, agro-based industry provides livelihood to millions of farmers, reelers, and weavers. Availability of several wild silks, notwithstanding, it is the mulberry silkworm bombyx mori system that provides the highly prized silk textile called the queen of textile silkculture is acclaimed as an important agro based labor intensive export oriented cottage industry creating employment to at least 12 to 13 people per hectare of mulberry garden well suited for economically backward section of the underdeveloped and developed countries which have an agriculture base and problems of providing employment not only to the agriculture poor but also to the landless laborers silkculture technology is very simple it can be followed even by illiterate farmers and most of the silkculture activities do not involve hard labor as they can be attained conveniently by women and old people it has come to stay as its highly remunerative agro industry with less investment and rich dividends It was introduced more than 200 years ago in India. In fact, it was Tipu Sultan, the king of Mysore, who organized this industry in 1780. The industry consists of three sectors that are linked to one another like a chain. They are mulberry cultivation and silkworm rearing, reeling of cocoons, twisting and weaving. The industry has undergone many severe vicissitudes due to various factors like disease and wide fluctuation in the price of raw silk research and development are fundamental to the progress of any industry and silkculture is no exception to it realizing this both central and state sponsored research institute which were established essentially to link research and development to silkculture and reach it to the doorstep of those people depending upon the industry for livelihood manufacturing of silk fabrics can be classified into two parts the first part in silkculture which involves four important operations why mulberry cultivation which is like any other garden crop silkworm hex production silkworm rearing and disposal of cocoons and engage in a large number of people including the household members like women children and old people In India both in univoltan and bivoltan areas of Jammu and Kashmir and western part of Uttar Pradesh where only one two cocoon crops are harvesting similarly in tropical regions of west bengal multivoltan pure races of silkworms and their hybrids are reared for commercial cocoon production Karnataka Andhra Pradesh Tamil Nadu seed production can be continuously produced silkworm has four stages in their life cycle namely egg larva pupa and adult rearing takes place in two different steps namely chakki rearing and late silkworm rearing for late silkworm rearing is conducted in separate and isolated model rearing house with good ventilation rearing is completed in 26 to 28 days the second part includes silk reeling twisting dyeing weaving finishing and spun silk yarn manufacture Reeling is unwinding of silk filament from boiled cocoon with the help of reeling devices. All these processes are industrial in nature. Silk industry therefore consists of cocoon production, 
post cocoon technology including railing, pre-weaving technology of twisting, dyeing, weaving and printing as its chief stages. India is producing all the commercial varieties of silk with mulberry, tassar, hairy and moga. All the four varieties of silk play a prominent role in the development of silk industry. Tassar silk is produced by tropical tassar, temperate tassar, Chinese tassar and Japanese tassar silk. These are semi-domesticated rearing and conducted in outdoor by feeding Terminalia herjuna and Terminalia tomentosa. Airy silk is produced by Pelosomia esrae. It is domesticated. Rearing is indoor by feeding resinous communist and heterofarex fragrance. Mugo silk is produced by Antheria asama. It is semi domesticated. Rearing is outdoor by feeding Bicleus bombicina and Litsia polyantha. In the group of natural fibers, which comprises cotton, wool, and silk, production of silk being 17,305 metric ton per annum and account only 0.3% of total textile fibers. It is very interesting to note that despite enormous increase in the production of man-made fibers in the recent years, global silk production has maintained steady levels. In the recent years, China has emerged as a major producer of raw silk while silviculture is a dying industry in Japan. Japan has reduced the production of raw silk from 48,000 metric tons in 1935 to 8,431 metric tons in 1886. China has emerged as the foremost producer of raw silk, assuring nearly 60% of the global production of raw silk. Silviculture activity had a technological advantages since it required lesser water for cultivation of mulberry. On the economic front, it remained to be a highly labor-intensive activity providing vast scope for both on-farm and off-farm employment. Further, silviculture activities are proved to be economically more profitable than other crafts. The main reason being that a number of cocoon crafts raised on a given piece of irrigated land could be anywhere between 4 to 6 cocoon crafts per year. On a rain-fed place of land, the farmers could raise at least two or three cocoon crops per year. Thus, the income flow was regular and assured in silviculture than in the case of any other cash crop on irrigated lands. All the silviculture activities are village-based and hence prevent migration of people from rural to urban areas in search of jobs. Silviculture could be a more advantageous agro industry for improving the economy of the deprived section of the society like settled caste and settled tribe. Non-Mulberry silviculture is practiced by the tribals. It provides self-employment opportunities to the educated youth in its varied sector. Silviculture is an agro-based cottage industry in India which has witnessed many prospects and problems since second century BC. It is one of the highly remunerative occupations implemented in rural India for the upliftment of rural economy and to derive rural energy. In India, of 6,29,143 villages, silviculture is being practiced in about 59,528 villages, which will be 9.5%. Indian silviculture has shown a dynamic growth during the last few years. This industry provides employment for the rural folk throughout the year irrespective of season. The modern silk industry in India has grown to meet the domestic rather than export requirements and this is a fact of great importance for the industry. Further, this industry provides employment opportunities to about 6 million people in India and they play a key role in the upliftment of rural economy besides earning considerable foreign exchange like China, India as a culture in which occupies a dominant position. It is more suited for our country where in majority mainly depend on silviculture for their livelihood. On the other hand, this agribusiness is most suitable to earn substantial income in drought condition especially in arid and semi-arid zones. In drought condition, when most of the agricultural crops do not review after a few showers, 
Malabari being a perennial crop, it will sprout and yield leaves for rearing of silk cones. Added to this, the never ending demand for silk throughout the world assures foreign exchange for India. There is a high export possibility creating trade surplus. Sericulture is good source for earning foreign exchange. Presently, India is earning about 850 crores from export of silk factories and garments. Although the silk production was therefore long in India, the progress made during the last 50 years is very significant. However, it is yet to attain global standards in producing quality silk. In the beginning, cultivation of Palibari garden and production of silk was mainly confined to the states of Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal and Jammu and Kashmir. In the recent decades, the silkiculture industry has spread to other states and agricultural zones. Presently, the total area under Mulberry Garden in India is around 1,79,065 hectares with different mulberry genotypes of varied performance. As for the Survey of Industrial Silk Association, the world raw silk production in 2011 was 85,812 metric tons of which India share is an account for 18.85% of the total raw silk production. Sericulture in Karnataka has occupied a premier position of with an annual production of 98.64 tons of raw silk from 1 lakh 77 lakh hectares of Mulberry Garden accounting for 74.15% of total production of silk in India. Silk has become an inferable part of Indian culture and tradition since several countries because of the fine quality, letters and traditional colors. In recent years, the tradition of women's fabric has been coupled with more pragmatic points and account of the latest printing technology. The process of modernization could not pick up the required momentum as it over ignored some pertinent issue connected with the sericulture industry, which was earlier confined to few traditional districts wise Kolar, Bangalore, Tumukur, Mandya and Mysore as now expanded to all the erstwhile 27 districts of the states. Continuous efforts made to improve the quality of silk by introducing hardening of bioltane and bioltane hybrids is met with little success. Similarly, the introduction of CSR bioltane hybrids developed with the help of JICA even though as Brighton the prospects of the industry is facing several practical problems to popularize them in a large scale. At this juncture, a specific reference should be made with regard to the research work carried out in various research institutes to evolve improved mulberry cultivars suitable to different agroclimatic zones. During the past two decades, efforts were made to popularize the cultivation of improved mulberry varieties. In Karnataka and the neighboring states under both irrigated and redwood conditions. In India, both univoltan and bivoltan areas of Jammu and Kashmir and western part of Uttar Pradesh where only one or two cocoon crops are raised. Similarly, in tropical regions of the West Bengal, even though multivoltan pure races of silkworms and their hybrids are raised for commercial cocoon production. India is the major producer of silk in the tropical belt. Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal, and Jammu and Kashmir are the major traditional agricultural states contributing to about 88% of the raw silk produced. The major silk producing states in India are Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal and Jammu and Kashmir for mulberry silk. Bihar, Orissa and Madhya Pradesh are known for Tassar silk and Assam for Eri and Muga silk. Even Manipur and Meghalaya are producing Eri silk. Karnataka stands first in silk production and then comes Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. But today, sericulture is being practicing in all the districts of the state. However, sericulture is being introduced in all the states and union territories of the country. The government of India and the state government have given greater emphasis for the development of sericulture industry. The Central Silk Board has been directly implementing certain pilot projects for the development of both mulberry and non-mulberry silk culture. 
with the advent of World Bank aid national sericulture project sericulture has extended its tentacles in non traditional areas in Assam Arunachal Pradesh Bihar Gujarat Himachal Pradesh Haryana Kerala Maharashtra Meghalaya Manipur Nagaland Orissa Punjab Rajasthan Sikkim Tripura and Uttar Pradesh these projects actively engage in the extension and egg production programs in addition several non governmental organization cooperative sectors and private agencies have thrown their might in uplifting the sericulture industry in general in the country karnataka with a geographical area of 1,91,791 km square is situated in the southern part of the indian peninsula stretching from 11.31 and 18.45 north latitude and 74.12 and 78.40 east longitude it is one of the 28 states and seven union territories of india and happens to be the eight largest states in the country in both area and population the state enjoys tropical climate with favorable conditions like moderate rainfall temperature atmospheric humidity and good sunshine and average Karnataka has a large range of cash crop with varied agroclimatic condition. It ranges from very moist rainy monsoon climate on the west coast, the western ghats and malnad area to the arid and semi-arid climate of the interior central and northern districts. Sericulture, which is one of the important cash crop mainly in the southern region of Karnataka, has been in practice for more than 200 years. because it involves low investment once the plantation is established it will continue to yield for 15 to 20 years with a minimum expenditure for maintenance therefore maximum turnout can be obtained with a minimum investment karnataka is the apex seal producing state in the country and accounting for 60% of seal production out of the cultivable area of about 14 million hectare mulberry is being grown in yearly 0.15 million hectares and accounting for 1.07% of the cultivable area in this state rarers are practicing improved method of mulberry cultivation and silkworm rearing v1 m5 s36 and s54 mulberry varieties are under cultivation to rear bivoltain multivoltain crossbreed and csr hybrid silkworm varieties karnataka enjoys a salubrious climate for rearing of silkworm throughout the year in commercial sericulture cocoons are produced both for silk and seed the harvested cocoons has to be properly stored till they have sifted for quality silk extraction in seed production proper care of seed cocoons is necessary to achieve high moth emergence for the production of viable eggs of quality to aim at successful cocoon crop production karnataka is not only the major silk producing state in india but with its well established organization infrastructure and research activities it also expertise in providing the necessary technical know how for the all round development of sericulture mulberry is an outstanding bio energy drought resistant tree which could be grown in different types of soil both under irrigated and rain fed condition in addition to being fed to silkworm mulberry is used in industry medicine aquaculture agroforestry social forestry watershed management and drought prone area developmental program in sericulture the most important factor is the cultivation of elite mulberry varieties exhibiting desirable agronomical and commercial traits it is an established fact that about 60% of the total cost of silk production is the attributed to mulberry production alone therefore it is very important to select high yielding varieties with better quality leaves in mulberry cultivation attention must be given to both quality and quantity of leaves they must be high yielding with low inputs however they must be able to produce still higher yields with better agronomical inputs in addition they should exhibit a wide adaptability and tolerance to varied climatic factor and resistant to pests and diseases among the important factor contributing for the successful harvest of cocoon crops mulberry leaf stands first compared to climate rearing technique silkworm race silkworm hex 
and other factors as the profitability depends on the quality of quality leaves produced in unit area or a unit type the mulberry genotypes are being cultivated from tropical to temperate regions in many countries of the world predominantly in eastern southern and south eastern asia southern europe southern north america north western south america and some part of asia different species of mulberry are widely distributed and used for various purposes though the primary use is to feed silkworm but is being used for multipurpose further due to decline of silkworm in japan korea ussr the scientists are diverting their attention for using mulberry for fodder fruit pharmaceutical agronomy animal nutrition landscape and gardening and other such purposes therefore the prospects of mulberry culture should be viewed with long term maintenance and utilization in global perspectives silkworm plays a vital role in transferring wealth from richer section to poorer section of the society silk is consumed mostly by the affluent and the money so spent by them on purchase of silk is distributed among the silkworms like mulberry cultivators and cocoon producer reeler twister weavers and traders unfortunately in the recent year silkworm industry in india is passing through a critical stage and almost demoralized the cocoon and silk producer due to the steep fall in the cocoon and silk prices this is perhaps due to the effect of import of raw silk from china as well as its illegal entry into indian market if proper step are not taken it is an uphill task to protect and save the industry in view of the gate agreement the contemplated measure to increase the import duty tariff protection fixing of support price for cocoon payment of subsidies appear to be temporary solution in order to salvage the industry from present crisis it is of vital importance to address the basic issues confronting the cocoon and silk producer importantly it is essential to improve the quality and reduce the cost of production to boost the sagging morale of the silk culture players mm-hmm.